In the previous training video, we learned how to add our task here. And we had two types of task. We had our summary and subtask. My summary task, as you recall, I gave it the suffix phase, so my research, outline, development, and so on. And then below my phases, we added the very detailed subtask. So when we complete a phase, that means we have to complete all the detailed subtasks below. If I've only completed two of the three in this case, then I still haven't completed my research. Now what I want to do here is show you how to add the project summary task, which you could say is a third type of task, but really it's still the summary task. But in this case, it's a task name that's going to summarize the project's goal. Now I'm not going to come in here and insert the task and type in my project's goal. Instead, I'm going to check a little box and automatically it's going to pull in my project summary task. Well, where does it pull from and how does it know what my goal is? Well, if you recall in an earlier training video when we set up the properties for our file here, our Microsoft project, we came up here and clicked on the file menu and went down to properties. On the summary tab up in the title, that's what's going to be pulling as your project summary task. And then of course down here, it's going to pull your comments as well, so keep that in mind. Once you set up your title here, go ahead and click OK. The next thing is to pull in the project summary task. You can do that by coming up, clicking on the tools menu, going down to options. On the view tab in the lower right corner, go ahead and check the box show project summary task. Click OK and a couple of things have happened. The least of which is it pulled in the summary task here and it gave it the task number of zero. Now that zero means that it's not really a task, it's just a summary task, at least for the project as a whole. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, these other summary tasks here, why can't they be zero? We'll cover that in the outline training video. For right now, let's just focus on the project summary task. Now, this summarizes the goal that our project is about. And up here in the entry bar, since I can't really see it, it's cut off here, it gives me the Spiffy Software Training Manual, and it's got .mpp. Now, any changes you make here on the project summary task will update and reflect in the properties screen. So for example, if I click here and I hit the backspace key to get rid of the MPP extension and then hit enter, it should be updated now when I go file down to properties and not display it in the title here on the summary tab, which it doesn't and so vice versa. If I go ahead and make changes here, it'll also update here. For example, in that indicator column here, the eyes for indicator, when I hover over that little icon, it gives me the notes from the property view. Any comments? Now you can make the change here as well without going to the properties just by simply double clicking on it really fast. It takes you to the notes tab and you can make your changes here. Click OK. And of course it will update the properties view as well. Now moving along, you'll notice that it's in bold, it's up at the top, it's our goal, it's the overall project goal. And in order to complete our goal, we have to complete all these mini subtasks here, okay? including summary task, which are the summary task of subtask. So when you look in the hierarchical structure, you've got your subtask to this summary task, but this summary task is to that summary task. So yes, you could have summary task within summary task. Well, let's keep it simple and stay focused on our project summary task, because again, this is going to be a process, and we'll cover how to define your summary task here, the phases that I've marked as summary task in the outlining training video. But the point is clear that in order to complete our goal here, we have to complete everything below it. And you'll notice as far as the hierarchical structure goes, it indents it over just a bit. Duration is one day. That's a reflection, the project summary, of the duration of the entire project. Now it's not looking at it collectively, counting up one, two, three, four, all these days here. It just says, look, the first task starts on August the 1st, and also the next task. All the tasks start on August the 1st, and all of them end on the same day. So it takes the earliest task, the start date, which is August the 1st, and then over here in the finish field, it'll take the task, the longest task, and say that that's the project summary finish date. And you'll see more of this in the next training video on setting up our durations, because not all of them are going to be one day. In fact, visually, it looks better over here in the Gantt chart. In other words, up at the top, you've got your project summary. It's got the first little starter marker here, and it'll always stay here on the start date. Now as these tasks expand and go out to five days, six weeks or so on, this end marker is going to stretch to capture that. So you can see as a summary as a whole that in order to complete the whole project, all these tasks below have to be completed, including the one that goes all the way out for two or three months. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.